I actually put a smile on my face just seeing them do that, just to see them do well, you know, uh, and put all of, a smile on all our face. Fabricio Paulino de Mello, a.k.a. Fab Mello, born June 20th, 1990, died February 11th, 2017. Rest in peace, Fab Mello. The journey to the NBA as a basketball player can be achieved in many different ways. It's like that because not all players come from the traditional circumstances that make them ready for the next step, and talent doesn't always come in the same package. When you use the word talent and seven foot in the same sentence though, things can get confusing as to the readiness of the seven footer versus him being used for the one thing whether developed or not, he can do with no actual skill involved, clog the lane and block shots. At that height, even if you're the worst offensive player in the world, the powers that be will see a level of value in you and that potential can push you all the way to the top of the food chain in a sport that every inch matters. You wish there was a way you can determine the development a player will need before he gets to the point he has to show and prove because if he's not ready, he's forever labeled a bus. The seven foot path can be a rude awakening in that way like it was for today's feature. His seven foot size pushed him through being in a different country and speaking a different language where his first love wasn't even basketball to a country where ball is life and talented players or ones gifted to be taller than everyone else are guided by their handlers who benefit off them in a favor for favor unwritten system of amateur sports. In any college program, a seven-footer can shine because again, with no skill involved, he can at least physically dominate opponents that may just become engineers, teachers, and doctors. You can go an entire season in college and never play against a future NBA player. One statistically said seven-footer gets the job done in at least one area of expectation, primarily blocking shots the NBA sees a chance to seize that potential and at least give it a shot because hey, if that doesn't work, there's 60 picks next year and the year after that and so on. Age doesn't matter for executives and being right or wrong on a player is rinse and try again. Fab Mello as a player achieved a lot on his journey to where he did eventually go, the NBA but only lasted a total of six games on that level, spending most his time in the NBA's development league, and just two years later, he was out the NBA altogether, taking his talents to Brazil, Puerto Rico, then back home to Brazil, where he'd go to bed for the last time on the night of February 10th, 2017. He died in his sleep from a heart attack found by his mom and pronounced dead on the 11th. Rest in peace Fab Mello, what happened to his basketball career? Salute to my boy K Platt Jr. on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Fab Mello was a seven-foot center from Brazil that grew up like most kids there playing soccer and dreaming of playing in a big stadium one day. He began to grow much faster than his peers and by high school was already 7 feet tall. Immediately, agent alike figures, as they call them, began pushing him through the pipeline, feeling he had the 2% gift that could set him on an NBA track. His US handlers agreed and facilitated he moved to America, increasing his chances of a big name school offering him a scholarship. By his senior year, Fab was a McDonald's All-American and acquired a scholarship offer from Syracuse, even though academically it's hard seeing a way he qualified with the language barrier or his classroom grades he's reported to have had. Either way, he gets to the Orangemen and in their zone defense, he shined his sophomore year, becoming the Big East Defensive Player of the Year before being pushed through one last time because of his 7 foot height to the first round of the NBA draft. At that point, rubber always meets the road when everyone's job is on the line. No more pushing through. Are you who they said you were or not? Fab was not for these reasons. Stunt number one, underdeveloped. 
Development for each individual is expected to come in different ways and at different times. Where overly tall players are hurt is them being pushed too fast through the maze of making the NBA. The goal is really to get them there as quick as possible because of them having a gift that instantly helps any team on any level of basketball. Academically, Fab wasn't developing to the level of his peers, then being shipped to a different country and having to learn their language as you try to make grades and be a basketball prodigy was difficult. Nevertheless, he got to Syracuse but spent his freshman year on the bench playing 10 minutes a game, averaging 2 points, 2 rebounds, and 0.8 blocks a game. Academically, he struggled as well, dealing with eligibility issues throughout his two years in college and being the center of an NCAA investigation regarding a grade change that allowed Fab to gain eligibility to play. Accusations were that members of the Orangemen basketball program wrote papers for Mello to turn in and receive a qualifying grade. The program self-imposed sanctions on itself and further winning were taken away from their program and Jim Beheim's history. On the court, as a sophomore, Fab increased his numbers in more minutes and a bigger role as a starter. But for a guy who really just began playing basketball in America four years ago, he didn't have much readiness for the opportunity he would soon get, ready or not. Outside the 2.9 blocks a game you see on paper, Melo as a sophomore still wasn't there yet. 3 blocks a game is impressive, but then when you start looking at the numbers around that and the circumstance of him playing in a zone offense for 2 years, never having to guard a guy one on one, instead standing in the middle and blocking shots, which isn't that hard for a 7 foot guy with some athleticism. He wasn't ready, but made the jump to the NBA after his sophomore year anyway, where his underdevelopment showed. Stunt number two, having to leave Syracuse early. Speaking of his underdevelopment, the only reason he didn't hit the NBA like he wanted to was because he almost was forced into the NBA draft with everything going on at Syracuse. He was suspended for academic reasons twice his sophomore year, the last time March 13, 2021. The first day of the NCAA tournament, he was suspended for the remainder of the season for more academic issues. His team ended up with a 34-3 record, made the regional finals but lost to Ohio State in a year many of Syracuse fans believe they could have won it all had Fab Mello been eligible. Then the investigation into his eligibility at Syracuse past, present and future came into play and the result left the school in a worse position than they were before he got there, causing some to blame Mello for their sanctions and wins taken away. Feeling let down by fans and also blaming himself for what was going on with the program being investigated and sanctioned, he decided to leave for the NBA draft an underdeveloped 7 footer that needed more time. Stunt number 3 The results were not good. Fab Mello's 7 foot path had led him to the NBA door like expected, but he'd soon find out he didn't have all the items he needed to be successful at that level in his bag. In breaking down his game, I really can't say that I ever saw pro-level skill or NBA-level talent. Even at Syracuse, I understood how much playing in the zone inflated his numbers and how glaring a stat like 5 rebounds a game as a 7-footer was. As far as a skill checklist, Fab Mello didn't pass and it's amazing whoever decided to take him in the first round came to the conclusion he was skilled enough to help their team. Maybe it was the three blocks a game in college that blinded them, but it doesn't seem like they saw him play and in workouts and really broke down his game and how he could be an asset outside of blocking shots. As an offensive player, he had zero moves. In college, he either scored putbacks right around the rim or drop off passes where he just had to go up and finish. Shooting non-existent. Rebounding disappointing, post moves elementary and super robotic, athleticism also non-existent. He lasted just 6 games with the Boston Celtics who immediately saw his talent and skill level was not what was expected. 
He was traded to the Grizzlies, then Mavericks, and waived both times before playing a game. He moved back home to Brazil to play professionally when in 2017 he died in his sleep from a heart attack at 26. All in all, it wasn't Fab Mello's fault he was pushed on through instead of being allowed to develop at his own pace. But considering how life could have went without the push, his achievements were an actual blessing before he passed away at such an early age. He didn't last long, but he made the NBA, easy or not for a 7-footer. But for these reasons, his growth was stunning. Salute once again, rest in peace to Fab Mello, condolences to his family, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.